Once upon a time, Frank Bruno was ABA heavyweight champion, 1980. He was quite lucky to get the decision, too, in the final. Absolute effort now for Bruno. Every punch he throws, he has to grit his teeth. Arms are hanging down, desperately tired. Frank of 12 years ago, and tonight we take a look at some of our current crop of top amateurs who've reached the semi-final stages of this year's ABA competition. Once again, it's Harry Carpenter. For this year's ABA national semi-finals, we've come to the northeast of England, to Tyneside, which has a long boxing history. These championship semi-finals are being held over two nights at the Gateshead Leisure Centre. There are two English boxers at each weight, one Scott, and one Welshman. And these are some of the prizes that await the winners. This is a bantamweight semi-final. Patrick Mullings is the southpaw, the black southpaw, against Richard Voles, the young Welsh champion. He's only 18. And he's got a hard task here against Mullings, who was in this particular uh, final, the bantamweight final, in 1990 at the Albert Hall, and was beaten by Paul Lloyd. So a former runner-up in these championships against the 18-year-old Welshman, Richard Voles. Patrick Mullings comes from the St. Patrick's Club in northwest London. He can punch a bit, Mullings, in the London championships. In his semi-final, he knocked his opponent out in just under three minutes. Bowles, the young Welshman wearing red. Welsh senior champion for the first time. Plenty of junior success. Mullings, the Southport, the former oh. finalist, boxing well within himself. wondering, perhaps, what this young Welshman might have in store for him. He caught him over the top of the right hand and then turned his back, and he's getting a little caution for that. You're not allowed to turn your back on your opponent. Rolls pushing forward, trying to make some punches connect. And Mullings quite good defensively, slipping a lot of the punches and waiting the chance to put the counter in. Again and again, he catches Voles over the top with that right hand. Mm, danger signals here for the young Welshman if he doesn't uh, lift that defense a bit. Mullings, and the Welshman told not to press down on Mullings' head. Mullings opening up now, and there's that right hand again. He's been threatening that all along. Compulsory count of eight over Richard Voles of Wales. Opening round. And again, that right hand is a real danger punch. Second count. Voles smiles as though... He really shouldn't Seven. be taking this count, Eight. but he's terribly exposed to that right hand. And there's still enough time in this opening Seven. round for Mullings to finish it, and finish it he has. And the 18-year-old Washington doesn't like being stopped, but he's being led to safety by the referee. And so Patrick Mullings from the St. Patrick's Club has won that in the opening round, two minutes, 52 seconds, and he'll meet Michael Aldis of Crawley in the finals on May the 6th. Adrian Stone from Bristol is the man wearing the black strip. And his opponent here, Jason Williams from Wales, one of the youngest competitors in this year's championships. He's only 17. The boy in the red singlet. 
Jason Williams from the Gwent Club in Swansea, Stone from the Empire Club in Bristol. The young Welshman uh, showed some nice moves in the opening round. He moves well, but uh, Stone looks the stronger of the two men. And beginning to force it a bit here. Adrian Stone taking part in his third successive ABA semi-final. He's been in the final once before. Stone looking for revenge here for what happened last year in these semi-finals because uh, a Welshman called Jason, Jason Matthews, beat him then. But this is Jason Williams taking this count. Seven, eight. Second round. And Stone now will be looking to finish it here and now. Well, Stone always looked the stronger man and uh, his punches are beginning to have their effect on this 17-year-old. So two counts over Williams from Swansea. And one more attack may well be enough. Uh, the referee, he's seen enough and he escorts the young Welshman to his corner. And so Adrian Stone from Bristol is the winner. Goes through to the ABA finals for the second time and you'll meet Darren McCarrick from the north of England. That's Dean Francis, and behind him, that's his dad, Trevor Francis, who exactly 20 years ago won the ABA welterweight title. Well, this is the light middleweight semi-final. Francis is all in black, and he faces here the Welsh southpaw and a useful man, Joe Calzaghi. He was only 20 himself, comes from Monmouthshire, and Calzaghi was ABA champion at welterweight last year. Now he's upperweight. So Calzaghi of Wales, Italian uh, forebears, is the southpaw with the white trunks against the son of Trevor Francis, who not only was an ABA champion, but went on to a very successful professional career. In fact, fought for the British welterweight title and met men like Alan Minter. But now it's up to young Dean to try to emulate Dad. Round two. Zaggy switching his attack very neatly from head to body. Right. And I think uh, young Dean Francis has got a big problem on hand here. Nice combination punches from Calzaghi, who's beginning to get through. Well, now, uh, oh, what a good left hook that was. That is the best punch we've seen so far tonight. So two, two counts, and although the referee said box, he called it off immediately afterwards. And Joe Calzaghi, last year's ABA welterweight champion, will go through to the final. And uh, Dean Francis will have to come again sometime. Eric Noy, wearing that yellow singlet, comes from Manchester. He's had his problems in this contest against the Scottish champion, John Connolly. And Noy was down in the first few seconds of this contest and lost his head guard. He's had a very uncomfortable time, but he's boxing his way back into it now. Noy's a very experienced man. He's been around as a Northern star for some years. And in fact, he was last year's ABA runner-up at this weight. Whereas John Connolly, the 25-year-old Scottish champion, is pretty well unknown to me. He's come on the scene, really, for the first time this year. But he's a big, strong fella. And nobody needs... Uh, nobody needs telling, particularly Noy, who suffered from it. And Connolly, although he looks a bit crude, 
is getting through with some of these swings. And Noy does have a somewhat weak chin. He was beaten in last year's AVO final in 65 seconds by Mark Edwards. But Noy is the better boxer of the two. Will skill overcome strength or the other way round? Final round. The Manchester man in the yellow singlet. He's on the floor again. Spread eagle. Is he going, he's not going to beat this. Well, he has beaten it, but the legs have gone. And he's gone down again. And the referee has completed the count. And Eric Noy is knocked out. And John Connolly celebrates victory. And he's the man who will go through to the finals. And for Noy, another year in which he won't be the champion. Well, this heavyweight division has produced a very interesting young man from Hove in Sussex wearing the blue strip is Scott Welsh, who is a real crowd pleaser. And he's up against the Scottish champion here, Andy Caulfield from Dundee. Both having a little talking to from the referee here. Caulfield, of course, represented Scotland at light heavyweight in the Commonwealth Games two years ago. And that was Caulfield bending at the knees on the ropes and taking a standing count against this extraordinary young man, Scott Welsh, who takes me back 30 years. He reminds me of Billy Walker. Not too much style, but a lot of aggression. And he gives his opponents a lot of trouble. Caulfield is six feet three inches tall, but he's not managed really to keep Welsh away from him. The boy from home, the posh end of Brighton. In he goes again. He wouldn't give him too many marks for style, but he's effective. There's a clean-up job on the face of the Scot in this final round. It's been a pretty hard contest, particularly for Caulfield. He's been under pressure throughout. And I don't think he quite knows where he is. He's such a brawling battler, Welsh, that Caulfield doesn't quite know how to handle him. He's totally confused. What a mixer. Caulfield looking as though he's saying to himself, what have I done to deserve this? holding on for dear life. Gets a little ticking off of that. Punches come from all angles from Welsh. Well, he's been given a standing count call, but I don't think he's badly hurt. I think he is just totally confused by the brawling tactics of Scott Welsh. Welsh has been uh, stopping men on the way to this semi-final. I'm not so sure that he'll stop Caulfield. I think Caulfield has enough experience to get him through here. But he's having a mighty uncomfortable time. <laughs> 24 years old, Scott Welsh. I think we're going to hear quite a bit more about this young man. Never stops throwing punches. The boy in blue, Scott Welsh from Hove. And there's the bell to end a very rough three minutes. And, uh, well, it goes to the judges. Welsh didn't have one of his quick wins. 
has he impressed the judges? And Scott Welsh it is, the Brighton brawler, through to the final, and he'll face the Welshman, Richard Fenton.